I wanted to discuss in this video a few reasons why, if you're not doing so, you really want to consider using the 12 volt trigger outputs of your receiver or your preamp to control your amplifiers and why that, in my opinion, is the best option for your amp power control. So both of my entertainment zones now use dedicated amplifiers to drive the speakers that are in those zones. I'm doing that zone 2 setup off of my Marantz AV7704. The home theater is my main zone, 11 speakers in there, and I'm currently driving them off of an Emotiva XPA11 Gen 3. Of course, there's two subwoofers in there as, as well, two REL subs powered by their own plate amplifiers and such. In the living room, I've got the 2.2 configuration with the Triad, Triad Silver 6 LCR in-walls for the mains and a couple of Triad Bronze in-wall subwoofers for the subs in the 2.2. And the amplifiers, as I've, as I've shown in some recently prior videos, are the Triad Rack Amps driving those subs and the Triad PAMP1 driving the mains. Now, in this type of setup, I could leave everything to AutoSense, meaning if I turn the system on, I turn the preamplifier on for a given zone and an audio signal is present, those amplifiers will sense that and they'll turn on automatically. Sounds nice, but honestly, I really don't like it for really two reasons. First reason is reliability. At least for me, this equipment rack is away in a storage room. I don't see any of it when I'm sitting in my theater and I certainly don't see it when I'm upstairs and on the other side of the house right there in the living room. So when equipment is not right in front of you and you can't see it, do you really know if it's on? If a tree falls in a forest, does anybody hear it? Is your stuff coming on? Is there a problem? You can't see it, you don't know. I'm sure, obviously, you, you could hear it, right? If, if all the amplifiers didn't come on, at some point, particularly for the mains at least, I'm not gonna be hearing any audio. I'll know that it's not working, but those subwoofers, well, I don't know. I just don't want to be sitting there watching content, wondering, is everything on the way it's supposed to be on? And constantly listening. Did I hear the sub? No, there was a gunshot. There was an explosion. Yeah, I heard the sub. Everything's okay. That's really pointless. I just want to sit down with reliability and know that all my stuff is on, all my stuff is working the way it's supposed to, and enjoy my content with peace of mind and without any concerns. And as I discovered as well, like not every piece of a gear auto senses the same way they have different levels of sensitivity. Some are adjustable, some are not. And again, it just bugs me to, to no end, sitting removed from all of the equipment in a room and not knowing with, with a high degree of certainty that it's working the way that I expect it to in the moment. The second thing that I really don't like about auto sensing is like, well, yes, while it's neat to have your stuff turn on automatically, keep in mind, it's also gonna turn off automatically. In some gear can be pretty aggressive in terms of how it shuts off and when it shuts off. And so keep in mind that not every piece of equipment that you're using creates noise. An Apple TV makes blips and bloops while you move around the UI, but a Kaleidoscape doesn't. A PC just sitting at the desktop if using it for gaming and so on doesn't. An Xbox makes noise, but it doesn't have background music. At least the PlayStation has background music. So you're just getting different behavior out of every one of your sources. And if something isn't making sound in a device with an auto sensing hardware, auto sensing circuit is shutting off, that means that when that device is ready to make noise again, that thing is gonna have to come back on. It goes back to the problem of reliability. And I've had occasions, particularly with the PC while I was experimenting with the auto sensing, where at the desktop, these amps would shut off. I go to launch a game and they just, they wouldn't come back on. Now I'm coming back downstairs to turn stuff on manually. It's a pain, it's not reliable, and there's really just no reason to use it in my opinion. It's a it's hundred times better to just ensure that your stuff is on when you need it to be on and off when you need it to be off, and you're not wasting time or you're not wasting power having stuff on needlessly as well. So use the triggers. Better receivers, and of course, pretty much any pair of separates is gonna have triggers. They're probably gonna have multiple 12 volt triggers. They're gonna be very configurable in the menus. Most devices that are triggerable have pass-throughs so that you can chain triggers, uh, trigger sequences if you have multiple amps. I'm running one amp for the theater right now, but my goal is to actually upgrade off of this Emotiva and probably end up with three different amplifiers for the, for the home theater, and so chaining them together 
will be really easy. So in my setup now, having, having changed everything off of the auto sensing to the triggering, here's how it works. So trigger one on the Marantz goes to the theater space and in the menus it's configured for that main zone on and off for the home theater. So I really wish those RHEL subs had some type of wired trigger capability, but they don't. It's just manual on off or auto sense. And honestly, it's the lamest part of my home theater. Every single time I go in there, I sit down, I turn everything on, the stuff turns on reliably, no subs on yet. I start playback and I'm sitting there waiting. Where's the click? Did the RELs come on? Do I see the white light shining a little bit down behind them? Okay, there it is. Yep, subs are on. I now have the peace of mind that, that my system is working the way it's supposed to. So for the living room, I'm using the triggers as well. The Marantz lets me set, it has two trigger outputs. Trigger one is the main zone. Trigger two is for the living room. And I have trigger two set, I have trigger two set to go on and off when zone two goes on and off. So the Marantz has a three and a half millimeter trigger, 12 volt trigger port. And so does the, tri the Triad PAMP1. Although the rack amps have the screw terminals for the Phoenix connectors. So I did have to get some special cables um, I tried cutting up a couple of the mono cables that I already had, but the conductors were so small, I couldn't, I, I couldn't make a good connection with them. A couple minutes on Amazon, a couple bucks later, I had a few cables of, of some thicker gauge that allowed me to use the Phoenix connectors and the screw terminal. So I'll put them up here to take a quick look and a, a link in the description as well. But with triggers, again, this is absolutely the way to go. I can demo this real quick. If I turn on my Marantz, You heard the clicks, that's the Emotiva coming on. Awesome, perfect, reliable. If the main zone of the Marantz is on, the Emotiva is on. Turn off the main zone of the Marantz. Emotiva, off immediately. Let's do one more here, zone two test. You can see the, the red lights and no extra light here for the PMP1. Turn on zone two. Blue lights, blue light. We're all online. Done with zone two for the night, finished my show, finished my game, turn off zone two, and off. This is absolutely the way that you want to run your system. Don't mess with the auto sense. At some point in time, something's not going to turn on, something's going to turn off. It's just not worth it. A couple cheap cables, we're talking three and a half millimeter mono audio cables, dirt cheap, even if you need the screw terminal split one that I showed on Amazon, it was like eight bucks for a pair of those. Cut them up, strip them, you know, use them as you need to. I cut them down to the specific lengths that I needed. All of that trigger wiring in the back of the ramp is nice and clean, perfect. 12 volt triggers, use them every single time. If you have any questions about it, post in the comments, let me know. Look for more content coming up. As always, please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.